Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Wanderlust Wednesdays. This is the weekly webinar series in which we take you on fantastic voyages all around the world. My name is Lori Overton. I am the owner of Overton Travel, and I am your host for this webinar series. And today I am so excited. Excited. I know you say I'm excited every week, but I am. I really am excited. But today I'm excited because I'm going to take you to a place where I believe most of you have probably never been or never been or doesn't know quite where it is. So I get super excited when I take you to places that are new and um, exciting and you're like, hmm. So I have really done my, my, my job um, as a travel consultant when I can take you to these, these, these new places. So today we are going to the beautiful country of Chile. Chile is in South America. It's that long strip of country on, on the western coast of South America. And um, it is one of those hidden gems. And I'm going to say, hey, let's go there soon before the rest of the world finds out about it. Okay, let's get there uh, while it's still just, just not as as touched as some of the other places. So before we get into the webinar, what I want to do, it just gives you a couple housekeeping notes for some of the first timers here. Um, and also we have people um, on Facebook as well today. So welcome. So this is a webinar format. Webinar format is slightly different than the uh, meeting format. With the webinar, you can see me, you can see the other presenters, and then you can, you can hear us as well. We cannot see nor can we hear you. So the only way for you to communicate with us is through the Q&A box. So if you are on Zoom, write your questions in the Q&A box. If you are on Facebook, write your questions in the, the comment section. And at the end of the pre presentation, we will um, we'll go through your questions and we'll answer them at that point in time. For those of you on Zoom, you also have a chat button the chat box is for you to communicate um, with each other. So for those of you who are regulars, thank you so much for coming back and, um, and joining us. Um, so if you see your friends, you want to say hi, you want to go ooh and ah, the chat box is the place um, for you to make, um, to make those, those little um, responses. Okay? All right. So before we get started, I want to... Um, get an idea of who we have on the line with us. So I want to, as I always do, take a poll. And I want to know how many of you have been to Chile before? So I'll let this poll stay open for about, about a half a minute to a minute, and then I'll give you um, the results. All right, we've got like, we've only had one person so far that has been. Wow. Okay, I'm going to give some of you about five more seconds to go to get your responses in. Then we will be closing the poll pretty soon. Okay, so I'm going to end the polling and I'm going to share the results. Hopefully you can see them on the screen. We only have one person <laughs> who has been to Chile and the night. So that's 4% of you have been and 96% of you have not. So great. So thank you. Um, this is going to be a learning opportunity for most of you on the line. And then for the one person that has already been to Chile, we're going to take you down memory lane. So this is going to be a great next hour for all of you, um, all, all of you here. So I'm going to stop sharing those results. And um, our speaker this afternoon is going to be Ramona Reyes. She is from Chile. She's actually joining us from Santiago. So I, I can see you can see her on the screen. But before she starts the presentation, I'm going to kind of set the mood by um, showing you a brief um, video um, about, about Chile. So if you have your little drink, your coffee, your Chilean wine or whatever, your, your lemon water like I have, um, get it out and... Um, Get that ready as we watch this video. Hold on. Thank you. 
me. I'm going to stop that video. So let's do that. I hope you all enjoyed that video that gave us a slice of Chile and all you can do there, the food, the activities, um, the culture is just fabulous. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our presenter for this afternoon, Romina Reyes Pizarro. She is actually joining us from Santiago, Chile today. And um, Romina, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Hi, Larry. Thanks for that presentation. And welcome to everybody. Welcome to Chile. Uh, as Larry said, my name is Romina Reyes. I work in the Chilean Tourism Board, uh, especially in the long haul uh, market. And I work in the North American market. So let's go. Welcome to Chile, where the impossible is possible. Chile is a place where, uh, during the phenomenon of the Chilean desert in bloom, abundant fields of violet, yellow, and white flowers covering the surface of the driest desert in the world. So Chile is a place where the desert blooms. It's a place where the stone giants live. In the Rapanui Park, we can find these stones giant of this day keep the secret of their history. It's a place where the whales fly. There are several points to whale watching in the whole country, but the main point is Francisco Coloane Marine Park located in Patagonia. It's a place where three continents meet, America, Antarctica, and Oceania. It's a unique place on Earth, located at the end of the world, and thus allow us to have a tourist proximity with Peru, Bolivia, and Argentina. So you will find many uh, combined programs with these countries. We are a long, narrow country. This is actually a picture from NASA. Um, so this is uh, how you can see the from out of the earth on my country and is a notorious geographical contrast. So we are between that blank mark, which is the mountain Andes and the, and the ocean Pacific. So we are in the middle. <laughs> and as long as United States, we have the whole station at the United States. So it's a very long country. And despite this, um, we are all widely connected with uh, the whole world. We have 18 airlines that fly directly to Chile and from many different ways to, uh, to connect directly from other places. Latam Airlines fly direct from New York to Santiago in a 10 hours and a half flight and a ticket is around 700 or 800, something like that. But you will find cheaper tickets with scale in Atlanta or Miami with other airlines like American Airlines, Delta or United. We are connected. This is all our port located in the different place in our country. And we are widely connected in Santiago, the place where I am located, is specifically in the middle, that giant point, uh, just in the middle. So from and where is located our international airport. So if you fly to here, you will land there, uh, and then you fly to uh, to other points in the country, including. Um, Rapanui Island, Robinson Crusoe Island, and even the Antarctica. There are many people come to visit us every year for, for those many reasons, but why visit Chile? You can see a beautiful sunrise in the mountain range. I talked with Laurie yesterday and I say I have a beautiful uh, view of the mountains and I want to show that. But as my grandma says, uh, men proposes and God disposes. 
today is a cloudy day, so no mountain to show. <laughs> but you can see a beautiful sunrise in the mountain range and then enjoy the mountain snow. And at that same day, you can see the sunset on the coast because we are a narrow country. So in my city, Santiago, which is the capital, you go to the mountain in one hour and a half uh, to the east and you can go to the west an hour and a half and, and go to the beach. So it's very close place and you have that kind of experience just in one day. Travel north and discover the windows of the universe or feel the immensity of our anxious nature. Or explore the south and sail between these us ice giants, which is just incredible. You can picture yourself floating, uh, floating in clear natural hot spring, listening to soft rain and fall on the lush uh, forest all around you. This is the scene that awaits you in Chile. There are more than 270 hot springs throughout uh, Chile, many located in rich verdant landscape like you see in the picture, um, or nestling at the foot of snow cape mountains. And you can practice your favorite water sport in southern Chile's countless lakes and rivers. Enjoy a day fishing or simply explore and observe the flora and fauna of our nature reserve and national parks. If you are an adventurer, you can head for Pucón on the shores of the Villarrica Lake, one of the most famous lake in Chile, for adrenaline, feel white water rafting, hydro speed, or kayaking, or as me, you can just enjoy the lake. Chile has almost 6,000 islands in the whole country. And, and one of the most important, the biggest one, is Chiloé, located in the south. As a secret between us, Chiloé is my favorite place in the whole world, probably because I spent many family vacation there. It's a land of myths and legends, unique folklore and culinary tradition. Visiting Chiloé is like entering a magical world class in nature and culture. From the moment you first set foot on this extraordinary island, its singular identity will take you by surprise. You could discover its palafitos, the colorful houses in the picture, built on stilts above the water, and enjoy the wit and warmth of the Chilote people whose traditions give this unique archipelago its inimitable character. And one of the most iconic trekking are related with a uh, road of park of Patagonia. If you haven't heard about that, the road of park of Patagonia are 17 national parks located in the extreme south of the country from Puerto Montt to Cape Horn. Imagine a road featuring uh, 70,000 miles, no, 1,700 miles of pristine landscape, fragile ecosystem, and diverse local culture. And Chile is, as I said before, Chile is a log country with more than 4,000 kilometers of coastline. And that gives you, give us a, not just a perfect spot for a water sport, water sport activities, but also a great seafood gastronomy that you will find throughout all the country. All this nature makes Chile a unique place, a place where the impossible is possible. What to do in Chile? What kind of experience I can live here? The experience are infinite as our skies are. Astrotourism is one of the main experiences you will find here. 
is experience a journey to the start in toy, observe constellations, planets, shooting stars, and all manner of celestial body in the spectacular chilling skies are the clearest in the entire entire southern hemisphere. That is why mostly um, almost 90% of the all astronomy activities in the world are located in Tui. Uh, we are fortunate to be part of the, uh, we have this kind of truly window to the universe here because Chile enjoys more than 300, uh, 300 clear days per year and with little or no light pollution in the north conditions are ideal for stargazing under open sky. For a truly close encounter with the planets, visit one of the many astronomical observatories open to visitors. We have uh, 40 astronomical observatories, 13 of them are just dedicated for scientists that you can visit it below, uh, and, seven, and 27 are tourists but this number grows year by year. And this December 14th, yes, this 14th of December 2020, we will be part of a new solar eclipse that will be seen through the country in different intensities, but mostly you, you will see 100% solar eclipse in the south, close to Pucón, um, which is a very beautiful uh, city and some of uh, uh, we are asking or waiting for, for have uh, this pandemic away from us for, that, for those days. Another uh, activities is the wine. Of course, of course, the wine. Experience new flavors, aromas, and colors with a tasting glass in hand as you enjoy the sights and sounds of these famous moñars. Wander through the terrace wines while you sample some of our celebrated white wines. Note the fresh influence of the Pacific Ocean in the elegant Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay from the Northern and Central Valley. Visit Casablanca and Valparaiso, really close to my city in, uh, in Santiago, one of the 10 great wine capitals of the world, and you can experience exquisite food and wine, or you can tour underground cellars and old vineyards, manors, and discover how the experts elaborate the finest wine from sophisticated Carmenere, the lost French variety, or Cabernet Sauvignon in the Colchagua, Maule, and Maipo Valley. But to be honest, between us, for a truly unique experience, this is Chile between March and April when the Grape Harvest Festival takes place throughout the country. And you will live not just the wine, but the full traditional experience. And those are our our main valleys, we have almost uh, 11 or yes, we have 11 valleys in the whole country, mostly located in the central part. Culinary tourism, we, we need something to match uh, the wine. Throughout your travel in Chile, you'll enjoy an a irresistible combination of mouth-watering seafood, fabulous produce from the uh, fertile land and sophisticated cuisine, together with the perfect wine pairing to captivate your sense. Discover the multi leveled flavor of Chile Chilean cuisine, a rich mix of time-honored traditions and original ingredients with modern European trends and techniques, the Pacific Coast is one of the country's most favorite resorts, providing an amazing variety of fish and seafood. If you are uh, if you are a fan of seafood, this is the place for sure. 
And you can take the opportunity to delve into Chile's immense uh, culinary landscape because for, for our expansion and our diversity, like the driest desert in the world in the north and 76% of the glaciers in the south, um, that give us a really rich uh, diversity, infinity of um, ingredients for our culinary uh, cuisine. Thus, take the opportunity to delve into Chilean's men's uh, culinary landscape, as I said, and savor its enormous variety from earthy, rustic fare to the most sophisticated gastronomic experience. Ethnotourism tourism is another kind of experience you will find here. The ethno tourism enrich you you can read and read, I'm sorry, your awareness of Chile, fascinating indigenous culture. Sample their delicious food, witness their tradition, and perhaps experience yourself a mystical connection with these people who keep their ancient traditions alive even in modern days. We have nine uh, recognized indigenous people in Chile, Aymara, Quechua, Apacameño and Koya, mostly of them located in the north. Yagita uh, is in the central part, Rapanui from the Rapanui Island, Mapuche, Yagan and Kawaska from the extreme south. And places you can find ethnotourism are uh, national parks, Arica in the north, Rapanui Forest, uh, Lago Budi, which is, is the lake, and Tierra del Fuego, which is the land of, uh, will be like, like land of fire in the south. You can enrich uh, your awareness of these people. The Mapuche people, renowned for their warrior spirit, still speak their curious, anxious, anxious language, Mapudungun. For a truly experience, uh, you can visit a traditional ruka. Ruka is like the house of the Mapuches, and is is you can see in the picture. Or you can visit a communal dwelling place at Woody Lake, close to Temuco, where you'll sleep, cook, and eat traditional food alongside Mapuche. It is unmissable. In the northern Chile, you'll meet the Aymara people of the Altiplano or the highlands. And in the village of Putre and Parinacota. Those are cities located in the extreme north. You can see their beautiful textile and colorful handicraft made from uh, jama wool. And you can sample, if you want, of course, uh, jama and alpaca meat with a side dish of quinoa. The Rapanui, uh, we used to call uh, Easter Island, but the name is uh, Rapanui. It's simply fascinating with its fascinating legends, anxious tradition, uh, keep alive in festival such as uh, Tapati. Tapati is a festival celebrated in February in the whole island. And it's a distinctive, uh, you can find the distinctive music, dance, and language uh, of this culture. And finally, in the very end of the earth, you can observe the uh, eight old ways of the Dagan and indigenous people who still sail in their traditional canoes through the channels and inlets of Tierra del Fuego. Uh, at the same way, you can enjoy uh, rural tourism. It's like a staying uh, with Chilean and enjoy the uh, more with more tradition 
Um, and there are different ways you can leave this kind of thing. Estancias Magallanicas are located in the Patagonia. And those are like old houses and you will find um, and read your experience there living with um, the people who actually live in that same way. This one. And adventure tourism. Adventure tourism is one of the main activities you will find in Chile. Adventure. Uh, we have been chosen for many years. Uh, the last one was in 2019 as the best tourism destination world for adventure. For three times in a row, we have uh, we have been chosen. And there are many places you can uh, practice adventure tourism in the north, in San Pedro de Atacama, in, in the Central Valleys, uh, or in Rapa Nui Island, in the south, the national, in the different national parks, but for many different activities. If you are an adrenaline junkie or thrilled to the sight of a spectacular landscape after a long wilderness trek, uh, then Chile is definitely the place for you. Sky down Chile's mountain and volcanoes or go for its many water sports, including scuba diving, surfing, kayaking, and quite surfing in the past, uh, Pacific Ocean. Grab your sandboard and hit the dunes or zip line through the lush forest canopy. Trekking roads away you through throughout the Andes. You can hike at more than 4,000 meters above uh, sea level in the northern highlights, or tackle mountaineering trails of varying difficulty in the world famous uh, Torres del Paine National Park. That is the most famous trek in here. If you are keen on sport fishing, venture deep into the through field Patagonia rivers and lakes where you will experience some of the best fly fishing in the world. All this in the midst of breathtaking natural beauty like nowhere else in there. And those are many of these uh, adventure tourism you will find in, in this country. I mean, you can surf, kayaking, trekking, and see many uh, or do many activities related with adventure. And you don't need to be like a stream sport person. You can just enjoy um, a soft adventure and you will find. And that is, Laurie, I think, take me uh, less than I thought. Oh, great. I mean, it was, it was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I um, learned a lot during, during your, your presentation. I think I've already kind of mapped out um, what I want to do <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when, I, when I go to Chile. You know, I was... Um, I love, I never even heard of the, um, the, the astronomy, like the um, astro tourism before. So yeah. can you have a glass of wine and then go look for the stars? You know? <laughs> I mean, you don't even know that in, one of the most uh, incredible things is even though uh, astronomical scientists is full of here, uh, you don't need to be a scientist. Mm -hmm. just for enjoy the, the sky. Mm -hmm. as, as I said before, uh, we have uh, the clearest skies in the southern hemisphere. So you can just light a glass of wine and stay out. It's probably mostly in the north, but just enjoy. Okay. Like, okay. it's a truly window to the universe, our sky. So just a couple of questions that I have, and then we'll, then we will, I'm going to stop sharing your screen right here so that we can just, um, it just see us here. 
Um, when is when are the best times to go to Chile? What are the different seasons? Um, we have we have opposite seasons. Uh, of course. So when it's your winter is our summer. But <laughs> has Chile is a really long country. You will find a uh, different kind of uh, climate through all the country. So if one of the reasons you want to, I, I don't know, run away from your house is, is the winter, mm -hmm. you will find summer here. Doesn't matter the time. Because in the north, it's always, it's always like a hot weather. And if you are enjoying more than the cold, uh, weather like me you just go to the south and you will find rainful days and uh, doesn't matter the time of the year you will find sunny days though uh, during summer in the south like if you go for the patagonia but in the patagonia in the same day could be a sunny day and then just this start a rainfall madness and then the wind just uh, doesn't allow you walk around and and it's like it's crazy but mostly of the American come to Chile between March I'm sorry between December and to February that is our peak season I personally recommend visit it between October, November mm -hmm. and uh, March and April. April uh, March and April are actually our season for festivals in related with wine. Uh, so the greatest season is, is uh, in that period. So I personally recommend those. The, the weather is not extreme in those days. Uh, and you can visit the whole country with, with, many, with not so many people around. It's a, it's a really good uh, time. So March but and April, would, it would be more like your fall, I guess. Kind of like our- Yes. Like yeah. Okay. Yes. Like but with this, with this climate change, uh, there is almost not autumn anymore or spring. Yeah. It's like a standard summer or standard winter. Yeah. I'm seeing that all over the world. The traditional um, seasons, no, I mean, aren't really there. And so you got to be kind of flexible. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. And then just one last question before we jump into some of the other questions. Um, so what's the typical tour that most Americans would take? They would fly to Santiago, stay there, would they head out to some of the islands or head down to Patagonia? I, one of my personal um, items on my bucket list is to get down to Antarctica, you know? So what I, <laughs> when I go to Patagonia, then, you know, take one of those Arctic boats over to Antarctica or what have you. So what, what's kind of a typical tour that people would do? The typical tour, uh, the Americans uh, typically stay around 10 or 15 days. It's a long stay because there's many things to do here. Uh, but many of them just fly to Santiago, as I said, which is in the middle, in the capital. Uh, uh, if you want like a full experience made two days in Santiago and that give you give you the opportunity to visit vineyards located around Santiago mm -hmm. or uh, Valparaiso one of the uh, world heritage for his this uh, colorful uh, probably is, looks like uh, San Francisco oh. is is a board uh, with very colorful hills, it, it's beautiful. 
and it's really close to Santiago. So stay two days in Santiago and that gives you the opportunity to visit around it and then fly to, to the north to San Pedro de Atacama and visit, uh, stay there for three days, visit different activities uh, or doing, visiting different places and doing different activities. Uh, like, uh, it's recommended to be at least three days because it, San Pedro is located around 3,000 meters, is above 3,000 meters uh, above the sea. So uh, in order don't uh, feel, uh, yeah. Yeah, the altitude. So similar to going to like, like you have to be concerned with the, with the altitude. Yeah, yeah. so you have to consider in this. Uh, so it's recommended to stay at least three days there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then fly to the south and you will uh, mostly of them go directly to Patagonia. There are many things to do between in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly of the American go directly to the Patagonia, as you said, is in the bucket list of many people. Um, so, so yeah, go to the Torres del Paine National Park uh, for doing different activities, many, many of them related with uh, trekking or, or this kind of just enjoy the landscape, uh, photography, uh, bird watching, uh, fly fishing, or many kind of those things you can do uh, surrounded with that kind of landscape. And a tour like you want to do um, is around five or six days more than that. Okay. okay. So from Punta Arenas, uh, you can take those kind of, and actually there is a, there is a company called Antarctica 21, who actually fly from Punta Arenas to Antarctica. So oh. you can take a trip, avoiding this. It's no, it's no nasty, but if you are not, really good uh, like sea person uh -huh. travel through through those extreme uh, weather in the actually the end of the world is is could be could be no of the time a good experience but from Chile you can fly to the Antarctica um, so you avoid that yeah. Oh, good. I can yeah. take a shortcut. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, you always see pictures of people on the big vessels covered up in these huge coats, you know what I mean, um, when, when they're going there. So you could just hop on a plane and get there. Yeah. And then one other question. Um, a lot of my clients, including myself, we love um, getting up close and personal with the locals. And so how, I saw you mentioned the ethno tourism as well, where you can visit the people, where they live, like how, how, how difficult or easy is it to arrange that type of tour as well for a couple of days? I'm sorry, I so lost at the, 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 the You had mentioned um, in your presentation the ethnotourism. I think it was ethnotourism, if I believe it, E-T-H-N-O, where you can yeah. go and visit the yes. local, like some of the tribe, the indigenous yes. people. Um, so is that pretty easy to arrange? Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's easy because it's not, they are not live there just for tourism. They live there using tourism as a way of, uh, as, as a way of live, but they live there. They cook that kind of thing. They speak in that language. So to just go there and be between them, enjoying with them, uh, cook their food or try their food but but yeah it's it's, it's an easy way to to find and especially in Rapanui Island especially there because it's the way they live mm, okay okay yeah, that would be on my list as well That's good. <laughs> for sure all right. yeah so all right I know we have a few questions in the Q&A section so I'm just going to give some of the folks on the line a chance to get their questions answered so I'm going to turn this over to Donna right now. And Donna, 
uh, let me know what um, some of the folks on the line are inquiring about. Hey, Lori. Hey, guys. Um, I want to invite our Facebook family to post their questions on your um, wall as well because I have both screens up. So first, we want to know, are there opportunities to participate in cooking classes, arts, and crafts with locals? That seems to be one of our favorites. I'm you sorry, and I lost you. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, are there opportunities to participate in cooking classes, arts, and crafts with locals? Oh, yeah. There's different experience related with that. Like, with local, like me, you can find it kind of thing. So, so uh, there is a, a different agencies, mostly located in Santiago or in the main cities that you can find um, experience with local, but local uh, like me, just a, a, a capital living here and sharing my tradition and my, my, my experience in my country. Or uh, like ethnotourism, experience with local who are actually indigenous uh, or come from our different indigenous uh, culture. So yeah, in Santiago, you will find food trips, mostly of them uh, related with uh, sharing with local or experience different uh, culture through the indigenous uh, people. Okay. Yeah, you will find it in, in both ways. How is the economy and what's the rate of exchange? So what's the rate of exchange for our American dollar? Uh, we have uh, pesos. Chilean pesos is our currency. And our, right now is around one uh, Chilean pesos. No. One dollar is around 800 uh, Chilean pesos. It's something around that. But okay. it's, it's a crazy time right now. So and somebody wanted to know what would we need to pack? So we need to pack some summer clothes, some fall clothes, and some winter clothes because I mean, you guys have all this variety of seasons? <laughs> yes. But I always recommend, because of the extension of the country and depend on what kind of activities you want to do, I extremely recommend uh, using, like, I don't know if I am saying correct, uh, but using leathers, you know? So layers. The jacket? You should yeah. layer up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you can take off or put on, depend on your, your needs. Okay. All right, Lori, that was the end of our questions. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. So I think you've answered all of my questions, except for when I get there, you have to tell me where to get that octopus I saw on that, uh, that, that, that picture of the culinary. Uh, <laughs> I am a big fan. Of, I, don't know, I like food. I like good food, but I really do. I'm a big fan of very well-cooked octopus. So I was sold on that slide that you had. The, uh, the octopus set. So now, if there are no other questions, I'm gonna go to the poll, the last poll that I have. Um, just wanting to see now that people have learned a little bit more about Chile. Um, let, let's see um, if we have folks that are you know, interested in going um, sometime in, in the future um, to, to Chile. So oh, that's if, great. Yeah, so we'll leave that open for a little bit. Um, and just to let you guys know, um, you know, of course, I'm known for my group trips. You know, most of you guys have traveled with me. I've heard, heard about Overton Travel from all the fabulous groups that we've done. Um, but Overton Travel, we also do individual trips. So if you find that, hey, I want to go to Chile or any other place that we talked about, um, and I don't have a group plan for it, I can certainly arrange it um, just for you and your family or your group of friends um, um, to go. So 
don't just wait for me to have a group to go. Um, we can plan it to go whenever you're ready. So let's see, we got a couple people who responded so far. I'm gonna close the poll in a few seconds. Oh, people still, still answer. So I'll give you a couple more. Um, I'll give a little while longer. All right, so we're gonna close this poll in about five seconds. All right, so hurry up, find your buttons, and we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to end this poll right now, and I'm going to share results. So we have about... Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so thank you for sharing us, you know, um, sharing your country with us. So we have 96% of the people said they would want to go to Chile, which is great, awesome. Um, let's see when they want to go. So most folks look like it's 2020. 22. So it's like, I may be the only one going there next year. So, uh, Ramina, you'll just have to give me a personal tour. Uh, uh, no, myself for and sure, Donna. For sure. Yeah, I Donna and I will be there ne next year. <laughs> <laughs> I am it. open to receive anyone. So ah, <laughs> great. And then I'll have to come back and um, tell everybody else about it. So, um, we have a lot of, so 2022 is where most people are, are interested in, in, in going. Um, I see April to June. I, I know why. Those are probably my wine drinkers in, in there um, who want to come and um, see, 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 see the grapes um, be, being harvested. So thank you all for, uh, I'm going to stop sharing these results, for participating in the poll. Um, this, is, this has been a great presentation. I learned so much about Chile and I'm sure a lot of people on, on the phone learned a lot. And so Thank you, Romina, for just sharing. Oh, thanks to you, girls. Yes, yes girl sharing your question. And thank you for so all one, one other question. Is Chile open? Like, when is it open for tourism again? Like, is it, is it open for Americans right now? Or when, it, when, is, it, when is, is the plan um, for it to be open? We are slowly, we are slowly opening it right now. We have a, 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 how you can see good numbers when you see people see, but, but yeah. It's yeah. like uh, we are improving and going better uh, okay. day, day by day. Mm -hmm. And right now, it, it's still close, mm -hmm. like the whole, uh, like almost the whole continent. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but we are uh, opening um, slowly. Okay. So so yeah. All right. Well, I'll keep a watch out, and I'll and I'll be happy when when it opens up. And so plan on hearing me hearing from me again um in the new future <laughs> yeah day. for sure don't worry yeah 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 i'm coming and then Send i'll let everybody me. else know what we're doing and they're like oh lori when you're going back when you're going back and so <laughs> uh, all right Romina, thank you so much donna thank you so much as well for moderating um you, our questions thank you all for coming on today's webinar be sure to join us again next week next wednesday at one o'clock next week we are going to croatia so we're going we're going to europe um next week i think it's the first european destination um that that we've done on 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 Wondola. so join us in um croatia is actually open right now as well so if you wanted to go somewhere now um croatia is is, is open as well so join us next week so in the meantime be well be blessed be safe and God willing, I'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.